There was a very, very long lineage behind this training called the Swedish Italian School. At the present I'm a professor of musical interpretation at the Opera School in Stockholm, which means I'm in charge of the overall charge of the vo musical work and the vocal, vocal work with the voice that is done there. Um, I've been there for, I think this is the ninth year, I will be there for five more days, then I retire fully. Before that I was uh, over 30 years in opera houses. First in, in a small one in the north of Sweden, directly after my, my, I finished my studies, and then for 27 years at Royal Opera in Stockholm. As a, as a vocal coach, as a repetitor, and as the latest time as head of department. Then many of the, of the, the singers at, the, at, the, at that time, permanent ensemble at the Opera House, Royal Opera House in Stockholm, especially the ones who sang more heavy repertoire, started to use me also as a, first as a second year and then as a vocal coach and then also sometimes a teacher. And then I had some big projects with um, many of these, um, you know, Sweden has exported a lot of singers within the, the Bagdadian repertoire and the, the, the dramatic repertoire, German ones. And I, I, the last 20, 25 years I've been working with more or less all the Swedes that have, have done that successfully, either domestic or international in different ways. So that's what sort of who I am. I came to know uh, your name uh, when I was researching something called the Swedish Italian uh, School of Singing, and especially the lineage of that school. According to David Jones, uh, the documentation of the Swedish Italian lineage is based on your research. Um, can you tell us about your collaboration? I come back to the last thing you asked for, but I'll tell you how I got to know David Jones and uh, uh, the way we have sort of dealt with each other. I had, when I was young, I read a lot of books about the voice and about, especially I was interested in finding out those who were training, um, developing dramatic voices at the time when this was a contemporary music. That is the time of Bergen, and the late Bergen and so on, and time of, time of, of, of Wagner and so on. I spent a lot of time on that, looking in the, in the library, library of the Academy of Music in Stockholm. And I also found some Swedish books, among, among them one of Dr. Gillis Blatt. So I was familiar with this and have used parts of it in, in, in my own way of working with singers, even if I wasn't, wasn't brought up in that school. What is it, five, six years ago? I have, now with the internet and all of this, I happened to Google on Dr. Gillis Blatt. To, to see if there was new information, because now they're putting out a lot of things on the internet that you couldn't find before, because it was hidden in some archive, some archive, somewhere in the basement. And then the name of David Jones picked up, uh, came up on the, on the screen, and his home page. So I, I, I started to read on that, and I, and then I uh, found it interesting this connection to America then. And I, it seemed to me that he knew things that I didn't know about this. So I, it was a lot of information that I didn't really get together with what I knew about it. But uh, I, I wasn't sure if, I was, if they were wrong or if I was wrong. So I contact, contacted him and I met him in Gothenburg when he was in Sweden. And then I invited him, him to come to teach at the uh, opera school, <coughs> master classes twice. But I did discover quite early that there was things that was not... I can put it this way, had been greatly in, misinterpreted in America. And one of it was the, 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 the lineage, what do you call it, the, 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 the family tree. So I, 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 I talked about that and I also wrote late several times and I wrote to David about what I knew and he put, I know he put it in his book and, and, and put me as a reference, but it's not really totally rightly quoted. 
because you know there has been so much said about this earlier, re referring to to um, Alan Lindquist, that you can't suddenly it's difficult to suddenly change all of it. And I told very told David Jones very early that it seems that Mr. Lindquist has sort of mixed at least everything about the the, the, the family tree, mixed it up. And then the answer was, yeah, there might be, but he was a very good teacher. He hasn't fixed up anything with the actual technique. Later, I also started to discover that there was a lot of mix-ups with the actual technique also. When it came to the lineage, the, the, the family tree, there's a lot of the that written that from this American school that not the, but the, the, the biggest figure in this old Swedish school was um, had studied with Garcia, had studied with uh, Lamperic, had studied with the teacher of Caruso, and none of this is true. He, actually, the whole school was very anti-Garcia and against Garcia. All of the members, the, the four teachers that are related to it, they, they disagreed on the onset and they disagreed on the on the uh, um, what do you call it Phone phonetics because it, it, they they were against vowel modifica modifications. They were absolutely against vowel modifications. They, they believed in keeping a a vocal tract stable, and then the, 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 the vowel will change, but not, but you don't do that willfully change it. So th this is one of the, of the places also it differs from, from, from what is said in America. No one is known to have studied with, with Lamperity. One of them uh, in this family tree, he started with, with the, the first one was uh, Albert Lange, and he had a student called, um, no, the first one was uh, um, Fritz Alberg, he had a student called Oscar Leist, who became a very successful singing teacher. So the Platt inherited what was made, in, in, developed through Alberg and also by Leistum. And Leistum picked up other things. He was sometimes in, and studied short in Italy, but not with Lampetti, because Lampetti lived in Germany. The biggest influence for Dr. Blatt, that was um, the, his second teacher, Albert Lange, who also had studied in Paris with Garcia assistant and hated it and abandoned it, and then got in co contact with German school, Bruno Wald, Bruno, Bruno Müller Bruno, this is his book. Some of them <coughs> are very Italian, you know, are related to in the Laila Voce, to position and open, Bacantare davanti. Some of them are related to Canta come parla, and then you learn how to, to parla first, so to speak. So, of course, there is Italian connections, but not to people that we know which they were. And Dr. Blatt himself, he, never, he didn't study abroad. He, he went once for a small, in 1906, to a, on a small trip to Germany, and then most probably he met someone related to this Bruno Walter Bruno, because he was always constant, constantly talking about this teacher himself. So the, when it comes to Caruso, the, the, they say in America that the, the, the Brad started with the, the first teacher of Caruso. First of all, that first teacher wasn't very important. It wasn't, it wasn't the one that helped Caruso to sing. It was the second one teacher who helped him to sing, but we almost don't know who it is. The family tree is a total mix-up, and I tried to put it right, and, and it's in the book, David Jones that has, has changed from what was written before, but not totally what, to what I said, because then you would have to sort of say, tell frankly, we have been wrong before, and that has never been said. And um, what about uh, Alan Lindquist must be um, very well known in Sweden. Uh, for the American audience, uh, he's kind of synonymous with the Swedish tradition. That's what we know of Sweden, is that Alan Lindquist uh, brought this uh, Swedish-Italian, as we say, yeah. or Swedish yeah. tradition to America. So how is he understood? No one knows about Alan Lindquist in Sweden. I have never heard, I had never, I've been dealing with this type of singing for, for 40 years. I had never even heard the name before I met it on the homepage of David Jones. So we have no relation to him at all. And I don't think many Swedes have. He, he, he studied with Hislop, who, who, who is in Sweden, was not considered a, a very good teacher. He was considered actually a voice tracker. They called him Horslop, Hislop instead, because he, he, he crashed voices. He had some success with some tenors and baritones, but not with sopranos. Hislop studied in Italy after the years with Dr. Blatt. And he developed, developed quite soon an overcompressed tone, which shortened his career. 
And then it became a singing teacher instead. And you know, you're to tell yourself, for more dramatic, a spin to tenor, it's not that dangerous to have a little lean on the side or to a little over compression. But if you do it with a soprano, there will be no high notes. Yeah. And Birgit Nilsson had no high notes after, after her, her, her study with, with, with Hislop. She hated him. And I know two baritones. One I studied with him myself, and the other, one, the, the other one was the leading singer, Troy Lopper in Stockholm, the generation before me, who studied with Arne Sundegård at the same time that Birgit Nilsson went to him to, to sort of save her voice after Hislop. And she had no high notes, the one she was so famous for later. She was just screaming the whole top. It took four years to repair it after his life. And actually, when I got to know this um, investigation done at the Corpus Christi in Texas on the net, and this I told David Jones, I sent him a mail, I don't understand everything, but was nothing, this has nothing to do with what was done in Sweden 100 years ago. And absolutely nothing at all. I can understand where it comes from, but if it, it, it often also twisted to something else. And I, I, I'm actually not so sure in the end, how much Swedish, I can't, I, at least I don't say, but I wonder how much Swedish did linguists understand. Because he even invent, invented words that he claimed being Swedish words, the scrasping, stra, scrasping of the voice. And I talked to Americans, and there's no such, I, I thought it was, it was an English word, but there's not no such word in English, and there's absolutely no such word in Swedish. I think it was skrat. This. And then it was the uh, to, to, to loosen up when you're tightening the, the, the vocal front. It wasn't the scrasping. There's no, such, there's, there's no such word at all. In relation to, to, to Alan Rinkers and, the, and the, the claiming that he coached Bigot Nielsen in 1938 is also not right. And, and so I told David Jones that that's not right. I knew her very well. I played at Master Closet with her several times. And I, 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 I talked a lot to her. She had never been in Stockholm before 1941 when she started at the Academy of Music. And she had never, she had had, only had a local teacher in the south of Sweden. And then the first time she ever met Hislop was when she came to Stockholm in 1941. And he started by humiliating her the first lesson. So she wouldn't forget that. Now, Tom, Tom Nielsen, she said, uh, because he was a farmer's daughter, it's not for farmers to become opera singers. You have to have brain. If you try to get into farming these days, uh, you, you quickly find that you, you have to be quite intelligent, actually, to make it work. <laughs> That's true. And she was very intelligent.